In 1885, a 22-year-old Englishman flipped a coin in order to decide his future. His name was Hudson Stuck, and he had decided to leave his life in London for good. Heads would mean Australia, tails, Texas. Can you imagine flipping a coin to make such a momentous decision about the course of your life? Tails in Texas it was, and from there life would take Hudson Stuck on an amazing and epic journey to the western frontier, to Swanee to train for the priesthood, to Alaska as a missionary, explorer, and author, and in 1913, to the top of the highest mountain in North America. Before he died in 1920, Stuck had traveled thousands of miles by dog sled around Alaska, visiting his mission churches in 50 below winter whiteouts. He had written four books under the editor of Ernest Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald, and he had been received at the White House by President Theodore Roosevelt. When I was 25, I was fascinated, maybe even obsessed, by two spots on the globe, Africa and Alaska. At Lemuria Bookstore in Jackson, Mississippi, I picked up a copy of a book called 10,000 Miles with a Dog Sled, written in 1913 by somebody named Hudson Stutt. I can't tell you whether I noticed the dedication to Swanee, the college on the mountaintop. But it was about Alaska and dog sledding and adventure in a faraway place, so I bought it. And I still have that copy today. 20 years later, working on a master's degree in theology here at the University of the South, I decided to write my graduate thesis on Archdeacon Stuck. I focused on his life's work and what drove him to do what he did. So I've been researching Hudson Stuck's life on and off for a number of years now. And in the process, I've come up with three lessons from his story, three principles that I believe we can all use to create good and impactful lives for ourselves. The first principle is a willingness to take risks, to take on challenges. That coin flip that sent him across the ocean was only one of the times that Hudson Stuck took a leap into the unknown. In Texas, the youth who had grown up not far from Buckingham Palace worked as a cowboy, learning to ride a horse and shoot a Winchester rifle before entering the seminary to become a priest. As the young dean of St. Matthew's Cathedral in Dallas, he took on the city's rich and powerful, including members of his own congregation. And in 1904, seeking even bigger challenges, Stuck jumped at the chance to become Archdeacon of Alaska and the Yukon. In the winter of 1917 and 18, Stuck and a companion made an epic 2,500-mile dog sled trip circling the entire Arctic coast of Alaska. Throughout his life, Stuck looked for opportunities to expand his world and to change it. The second principle is appreciation of nature and the outdoors. As a child, Stuck scrambled among the peaks of the Lake District in northern England, a place made famous by the 19th century romantic poets Coleridge, Wordsworth, and Shelley. Here in Swanee, he crawled through the muddy tunnels of Wet Cave and went for long hikes in the woods. While living in Texas, he visited Yellowstone and the Grand Canyon and climbed in the Canadian Rockies as well as summiting Mount Rainier. In his books about Alaska, Stuck described the glories of the northern lights and the lure of the great mountains. He was continually inspired and refreshed by the world around him. The third principle is doing good for others. Stuck lived out what was called the social gospel, the idea that being a Christian necessarily involved helping one's fellow humans. After graduating from Swanee and becoming dean of St. Matthew's Cathedral, Stuck started a school for orphans a home for elderly women, and a night school for mill workers in Dallas. He also was a leader in getting the Texas legislature to pass the state's first child labor laws. In Alaska, Stuck to this day is famous for his advocacy work for Alaska Natives. His legacy in the far north includes libraries, mission schools, and the first hospital north of the Arctic Circle. He mentored Alaska Natives like Johnny Fretson, who at 16 years old was base camp manager for Stuck's Denali expedition and then, with Stuck's encouragement, became the first Alaska native to graduate from college, right here at the University of the South. Fretzen then returned to Alaska and spent the rest of his life as a leader of his Gwich'in people. On March 17, 1913, Stuck and three others aimed their dog sleds toward Denali, also known as Mount McKinley. In the group was Walter Harper, 
Stuck's half-native 21-year-old protege. On June the 7th, it was Harper who took the first steps on Denali's summit, a feat of which Alaska natives, even today, are rightly very proud. I recently had an email exchange with a writer and historian of the far north. When I mentioned Hudson Stuck, she said, he's just such a legendary figure up in Alaska and the Yukon. And this is in spite of the fact that as of October 2020, Hudson Stuck will have been gone for 100 years. Now, obviously we don't have to be exactly like Archdeacon Stuck. Taking a risk, meeting a challenge, doesn't have to involve leaving the country or taking on governments. It might mean moving to a new place for a job we really want, or something as small but potentially life-changing as texting a certain special person. We don't have to crawl through caves or summit mountains to enjoy nature. Going for a walk in the woods counts. So does having tea in the sun on a patio. And helping others can be just as much about being there for a friend as about building hospitals or schools. But the basic principles are the same, and the benefits to ourselves and to our world are just as real. So I want to ask, what are our risks and challenges? How can we access the joy and beauty of our world? And where can we find our own paths to helping others? Here in Swanee and All Saints Chapel, one of the statues behind the altar is different than the others. It features not just a person, but also a canine. Bottom row on the right, middle statue. Hudson Stuck, bundled up for Alaska, with a sled dog jumping up on him. Now, despite his altar statue, Hudson Stuck wasn't exactly saintly. He was cantankerous and opinionated and made enemies, especially among the white settlers in Alaska. But it's obvious that he left behind a legacy, that his life meant something to both himself and the people around him. And by emulating Stuck's willingness to take risks, his love of nature, and his desire to do good for others, we can not only create the possibility for a good and fulfilling life for ourselves, we also have the potential to make the world a little better, or maybe even the potential to move mountains. Thanks so much.